have a very special guest. She is on a mission to help others with honing their psychic mediumship abilities. She does this through multiple platforms. To name a few, her YouTube channel, her Facebook group, Mediums Corner, and her website, kreynolds.org. She has studied at the prestigious Arthur Finlay College. She has written articles that have featured in OM Times Magazine. Her latest works include a published book, The Evidential Medium, a practical guide for developing mediumship. She is a medium, an author, a public speaker, a teacher, and a mentor. I'd like to welcome to the show, Kay Reynolds. Hi. Hi, how are you doing, Kay? Doing good, how are you? Good, good. Well, it's nice to finally have you on the show. Um, we're really excited to have a, a guest such as yourself on the show. Um, so I guess Thank you very much. Mm -hmm, I guess we can get started with um, I guess at the beginning, you know, how, how did you realize you were a medium and you know how did this all, all come to be? Uh, well, <laughs> I my first experience was around the age of five, maybe six, uh, where I was in my bedroom and just doing what all little five, six-year-old girls do playing with my Barbie dolls. And I looked up and as clear as day, I could see a Native American Indian in my bedroom. <laughs> and we locked eyes, we, you know, and, and he motioned for me to, to uh, be quiet and not say anything because my sister was in the room and I didn't say anything. And I just sat there and stared. We just kind of stared at each other for a little while. But I remember that uh, very plainly. I, I still, to this day, rem well, remember that experience. And so I would say from that point on, uh, I didn't see the spirit world in the way that I saw him because he was almost like a manifestation, like he was real, like I would see you, you know. But I always had this feeling growing up as a child that, I had all these people around me and I didn't quite understand it. I just knew that they weren't people uh, that were living. I knew that they were people from heaven. Um, I called them angels because of my Christian upbringing, but I now know uh, that's not who they, they're not, they weren't angels. They were actually people from the spirit world. Um, so that happened all through my childhood. I was just aware of it and just knew it. And then I would say probably uh, when I was around 12 or so, it started to um, beef up a little bit. And I was just started becoming aware of somebody that was in the house. I would know where this person was standing and I knew it was a man and I, you know, so I started to really get more into the details, but I still, you know, I was raised very much in a Christian home and I didn't really understand it. I never heard the word medium or anything like that. So that didn't even come into my mind, but um, I, they, they started bringing me in my, when I was sleeping, I would have people come to me that I knew 
were no longer that were dead. I knew they were dead in my sleep. And they were coming to me and telling me to tell my mother specific things. And I'd wake up in the morning and I would just know that I had to go and tell my mom something. And that would be the first thing I would do. I'd get up and go straight to her and tell her what I was told. And she always understood it. I didn't because I didn't know who these people were. But she knew who they were. So and your, uh, your, mom, your mom had abilities as well? And well, sort of. I, I didn't find that out until about three years before she passed. But okay. um, Go ahead and continue. I'm sorry. But, I just. But, but she knew who the spirit people were that were coming because it was family members that I'd never met before. But she knew who they were, they were her family. And um, so that started happening. And, um, you know, I asked my mom, you know, why? Why do these people come to me in my sleep? And why, why is this happening? And her explanation was quite beautiful, actually. She just told me that uh, God needed messengers on earth to get messages to people. And he chose me and I should be honored. And that was all I needed to know that I was, you know, chosen by my God. So I was like, okay, <laughs> that's fine with me. But as I started growing, you know, getting older, you know, I would say when I got into my 20s, things really started to happen and I, it didn't quite make sense to me. And, uh, you know, I just, it, things that just made me stop and go, what is this and why is this happening? So I would say I was in my late 20s and I was watching TV and I saw on Oprah, I was there, I, there was a medium on Oprah and she started talking about what happens to her and my mouth just fell open because I was like, oh my God, that's what happens to me. <laughs> that's what I do. <laughs> and that was the first time I'd ever heard the word medium. I didn't know what a medium was. I'd heard the word psychic before, and I was uh, very curious about psychics, but I'd never heard of a medium. And um, so that, that really just sent me scrambling to find out more. I mean, that really got my attention when I saw that. I just started reading lots of books. So I would say my late Late 20s was the first time I heard the word medium, but uh, I was in denial, even though more and more stuff was occurring, I was in denial because in my mind, mediums were people who were on TV, not me. Right. So I didn't quite believe it. And then when I moved to England, um, realized that I, I just knew that I had to do something. I had to figure this out and then I realized it's quite open over there and uh, so that that's when the doors really started to open mm -hmm. but it took me a couple of years to get up the nerve to go to the Arthur Finn College because when you look on the website it, for me somebody who was still going eh, I don't know if I am or not <laughs> you know I'm still in that denial phase and when you go on that website and you see all the stuff that they do, and I was like, Golly, this, this, this is for people who are serious. I, I don't even know if I am, but uh, I did start dabbling in it. And I went, uh, there was a, what they call a circle. And I know that in America now we're starting, they're starting to do circles as well, which is where you have somebody who leads the circle and, like-minded people come to learn and to discuss um, psychic abilities and mediumship and awareness and those sorts of things. And I just accidentally found out that there was one in the little town where I lived. And so I started going to this circle to see if this was real, um, to see if I was crazy <laughs> or if I really was talking because by this time I was in full mode communicating with my dad and my granddad and not only that but then people 
in the spirit world who are, were connected to people that I knew here on earth and mm-hmm. um, started coming to me. And I would give them information to my friends and they would confirm it. And so it, it went from, it's all in my imagination because, you know, I'm just talking to my dad and granddad. I, you know, it's just my imagination. <laughs> They're not really answering me. It's my mind. But then when complete strangers came to me that I knew nothing about, right. and my friends here were confirming it, then it was like, oh, okay. <laughs> maybe, maybe I am. And so that's when I decided it was time for me to really get serious and do something about it. Mm-hmm. So I did the circles for a little while. And then I got up the nerve to go to the African college. Yeah. <laughs> and how, how, were the, how did the studies go at, at the Arthur Finn College? I mean, Well, it was quite, quite intense. Like I uh, said before we started, um, the week-long courses uh, start on Saturday. You leave on Saturday. You, um, you go from 9 in the morning till 9 at night. So you, it's quite intense, um, but it's just jammed packed, and they, you know, they have a thing that they call Weepy Wednesday because by the time Wednesday rolls around, everybody's in tears <laughs> because you're 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 working one, and that's draining on your energy when you work uh, mediumistically. It's quite draining, so you're you're exhausted by the time Wednesday rolls around, and we do a lot as mediums. I would say probably 95% of your development is developing of your own soul. And that can become quite emotional because you're releasing all the hurts and things that you've gone through in your lifetime. And so that can be quite emotional as well. So Weepy Wednesday um, is quite, quite true (laughs) because it's quite, you know, it's, it's not an easy life, is it? Um, and living in your shoes, as far as the things that you experience and you have to you have to deal with. Uh, well, yeah, there's a lot that 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 comes with it. I guess you could say mm-hmm. um, you do. I believe that you know there are there are a lot of people that I believe on just natural mediums. Those, I, I believe I'm one because I. I would say those who grow up with it their whole life, that they're, they're meant to be a medium in their lifetime. But then there are those people that, you know, may, may go through a traumatic experience in their life and something happens and they begin to awaken and these um, the psychic faculty begins to, um, it, you know, develop. It, it, it can be hard. It, it, you still have to in my opinion, even if you are a natural medium and you've been doing it your whole life, I still believe you need to train because it's the training that will help you to polish it so that you don't have a lot of fluff in there and make sure that you're doing things on an ethical, in an ethical way and make sure that you understand, you know, how is the spirit world doing this? How am I doing this? And how are we making this work, you know? I'm one of those people, I, I'm an educator by trade. So for me, I have to understand things every which way. So I have to look at it from every angle and flip it upside down and you know, do all of that. And I believe that if you're really going to take your mediumship training seriously, that that's what you really need to do. You really need to train hard. It makes a difference. So now in your... In your life works and in your new book, um, you really create a sense of community and a support system. Um, Can you can you touch on that for us? Yeah. Um, Can I can I just say that my book's not published yet? It launch date is June eleventh. So um, yeah. So uh, you know, as a medium, you 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 know just. There's the, the first part that you go through is just that acceptance of, oh my God, this is real. And I'm not crazy because there's other people that do this too. So that in itself is an emotional toll. 
But then once you get past that, then you have to start learning how to trust, trust in your own soul and trust in the spirit world. And that's another big hurdle. So there's all these hurdles and it's like you get over one hurdle and then bam, there's another one. So all of that takes a toll on you in your development because it, to me, me, you know, your training or mediumship in general really is like a roller coaster. You're up, you're down, you're up, you're down. And, you know, like our, our good friend Forrest Gump says, um, you know, life is like a box of chocolates. Well, you know what? Being a medium is like a box of chocolates. You never know what's going to happen. You, can't, you don't have a script. So you have to put all of your trust in, in your soul and in the, in the spirit world. So, um, you know, so you, 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 it, it's so different, you know, because you can't. You can train and you can learn all these techniques, but when it comes down to giving that reading, you don't know what's going to happen. You don't know who's going to show up. You don't know how the evidence is going to go. And sometimes, you know, your energy might not be quite right and, and it just doesn't work the way you want to. So, you know, you, you go, you have your highs and you have your lows. So, uh, you, so you have to deal with all of that. And then you have to deal with the non-mediums that are in your life because, you know, I can't tell you how many mediums I've talked to who have said, yeah, I've lost friends over this. Or I've lost family members won't even talk to me. So you have that aspect of it as well. So, you know, when you finally get up that nerve, and I do believe we do, most of us have to get up that nerve to take that step to see if you really are a medium. You need to have a good support system. You need to have people there that are gonna build you up and not bring you down. Um, because it, it's, it's just a roller coaster of a journey. It's not an easy path. And there's lots of roadblocks along the way that you've got to learn how on your own, you've got to learn how to maneuver and work through and that's really what that you're doing sense. isn't it you're, yeah. you're you're giving support to others yeah i i you know and i'm a teacher by trade and i taught first grade forever so i'm a nurturer anyway <laughs> mm -hmm. so um it, it i just believe in that and because it's good for our psyche it's good for our own soul so um mediumship is hard enough as it is so Find a good tribe, people that will lift you and not, not um, bring you down. And so uh, you need, you just need that. But we need that as in general, as humans anyway. But with this path, it's a little, it's a little more difficult, I think. So it's really important to find a good tribe. Yeah. Um, without giving too much away, you mm -hmm. said that June 11th was the release of your book. Yes. Um, what is the overall theme and highlights of the book? Well, it's it's really my it's it's like a teaching memoir. So it's I I tell my story of when my I start with my training when I started at the Arthur Finley College. So it's really geared for me people who um, really are already on that path and they're already trying to train. So it's for those people. However, I say that, but anybody who's curious about it would enjoy it as well. They may not get anything out of the exercises. They would on some of them, but the, the more difficult exercises, they might not get anything out of. But I tell my story, my highs and my lows, the good, the bad, the ugly, um, and I, give examples of readings that I've done. So anybody would find, I would think that's curious about this topic would find that interesting. But, um, I, you know, my, my intent was to write a book for those who are developing because prior to me leaving to, to go live abroad, when I was living in, in uh, the Oklahoma, Texas area down, Bible Belt area. I learned real quick as a kid, don't tell anybody. So my mother was my only confidant. 
because everybody laughed at me or made fun of me when I, I thought I was crazy. So I, I, you know, sat on it and I suppressed it. And when I finally started training, you know, sitting in the, the halls of the Arthur Finney College, where all these pioneer mediums attended, I kept thinking to myself, man, if I had only had this when I lived in Oklahoma and Texas, this would have been fabulous when I was younger. So I, I'm a, a writer. I love to write. I, t I taught writing. So I just, the idea came, write a book and make it so that you can reach those people that you don't have anywhere to go and train because it's in America uh, there's there is nothing like the Arthur Finney College in America I mean you have Lily Dallin you have um uh, my mind just went blank the place in uh, Casa de, de in um Florida but they they don't even compare in my opinion don't even compare with the Arthur Finney College it's not even the same league so I wanted to be able to write a book that would reach mediums that mm. um, can't travel to Lily Dow. You know, I find what I found, I've been back to the States for two years now. What I found is you have to travel great distances to get quality mediumship training, and it's quite expensive. So, I mean, I could go to uh, New York and and there's a lady in New York who actually does teach at the Alpha College sometimes. But I could buy a ticket to England and do a week long course at the college for just a few hundred dollars more than what it would cost to do four days at her place. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> With hotel and food and everything else and travel. <laughs> so it's like, uh, you know. <laughs> so that was my intent was to write a book for mediums that really got to the nitty gritty because another uh, thing that I found, like I bought every book imaginable to learn about what was happening and none of them got down to the nitty gritty. It was all very basic stuff that confirmed that, yeah, probably I was a medium, but nothing really, I didn't, I couldn't find any book that really taught me how to practice and learn about mediumship. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to feel, try to feel that void if I could. So. That's, a, that's a good inspiration and uh, motivation behind writing the book. Uh, it's fascinating. Yeah. Um, let me ask you a question. Can, any, can anybody become a medium or is this something that is, um, I think you had mentioned earlier that you know some people are kind of just born or meant to be mediums. Yeah. Well, that's the big debate, um, Dylan. <laughs> there are there are those people who believe that you you're either born to be a medium or you're not, and then there are those who believe that we all have some aspect within us that we could possibly develop enough to where we could become aware of the spirit world. So let me explain that. We, we all have this, this, both sides of that debate, you know, we all believe this. We all have psychic abilities within us, every single person. And that's just your intuition that we all have. But there is more to that intuition that we can awaken within us. And when that starts to awaken, awaken then that intuition starts to really develop even more so to where it's to the point to where <clears throat> we might be able to gain insight just by you know blending our energy with that of somebody else um that's here that's living is that is like that some, is that intuition like um <clears throat> possibly like your spirit guide or is that your higher self what what do you think that is what is that your intuition it comes from the soul so that's that's it's all soul work so psychic does mean soul in, in a roundabout way 
So it all comes from the soul. So when you're working psychically, you work soul to soul. So <clears throat> the soul to somebody who's living. When you work mediumistically, then you, you're working soul to soul, but it's from the uh, incarnate to discarnate soul. So it's all soul to soul. So the majority of the work that you do is through your soul. Gotcha. Okay. So, um, but we all have the ability to, to train and, and learn to develop our psychic faculties. We all have that. But in order for you to work on a mediumistic level, you're, you have to have your psychic faculties have to be developed or developing. And you use your psychic abilities, you'll use those when you work with the, with the spirit world. So if you've um, learned to develop your psychic abilities, it's very possible that you will become aware of that there's someone near you that's not quite, you know, not living. You just know it. You mm -hmm. can feel it. So I believe that that all of us kind of have are, are capable of developing enough to where we might feel our loved ones because it's that that soul imprint, their energy, we still might recognize it when they come close to us. So if we if we're capable of just quieting our minds down and getting the mind out of the way we might become aware that we feel mom coming close, just know it, you know, or maybe a thought runs through your mind and then you feel her, you know? So I think we all can do that to some extent. Um, you may have had experiences like that yourself or somebody that you know it's in the spirit world, you just get this feeling that they're with you, you know? Um, to me that I think we all kind of have that ability there but I do believe that there are some you know it's the true mediums that step up that really um you know can do the work right yeah but it, you know I guess it's just like you know a classic pianist you know you, you put in the work there but I do believe some people will only go so far and that they will, they'll never be able to develop it. Right. But, but is that because they can't, or is it because it's not their path? It's not their soul's journey. That makes you sense. Know, you know, does that make sense to you? So perhaps, you know, their journey is not to do this work, but it's to be of service in another way. Um, for those that do have abilities, um, where do they even start to try to understand and learn? I mean, what, what kind of direction can you give them? Um, maybe you can lead them, you know, so there's not as much of a struggle. Or yeah, I, I well, be, be, I would say be leery of everything you hear and read, because there's a lot of um, inaccurate information floating around out there. Um, really listen to your own intuition, listen to your gut. Uh, if it doesn't feel right, don't jump on board. Because, you know, there's a lot out there that's not, not accurate. Find some, find yourself a men somebody to mentor you. Find somebody that resonates with your soul and you'll know it, you'll know, I mean, I knew when I met my mentor, she had been talking for five minutes. It was the first time I ever met her. And I knew, I knew she was going to be my mentor. I mean, she touched my soul in a way that I was, you know, tearing up and had a lump in my throat because I wow. knew. So I just knew that. And so, you know, yours might not be to that extent, but you'll, you'll get that feeling that, all right, this resonates with my soul so i would say pay attention to that and and don't stop until you find a, a mentor that does resonate with you that would be my my suggestion um buy my book <laughs> 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 that's, 
That would be my other suggestion. My yeah, next book, right. yeah, my next book is going to be about the beginnings of my journey, which about the uh, how, you know, it's going to be more about my guide and my awakening and all of that kind of stuff. Um, that but, sounds like a fascinating read. It, and that will be geared for a lot anybody really because it's about the soul's journey because that's what it was for me but I won't get too much away on that but um, when, when are you expecting to have that um published um I I just want to take a vacation <laughs> 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 I've been because I started writing my book my the one that's about to publish started it in November so I've just been eating sleeping and breathing book <laughs> this November but um I just want to take a little break but that I already know you know what that's going to be about so I have a fascinating stories about my guide uh, and the journey of getting to know my guide that's a, a very important part of developing as a medium is getting to know your guide because they're your partner mm -hmm. Now, I noticed um, I was watching your YouTube channel, watching some videos of you doing some readings, and um, I've had a little bit of experience in the past with um, psychics, and uh, I just, I couldn't help but notice that, like, how personal and how detailed you are in, in your readings, and, like, how you were able to even pull, like, details about um, a person's, like, past environment. At, I think it was at the person's grandmother's house or something like that. Um, yeah. That's pretty amazing. I mean, how, how do you, how are you able to do that with such detail and accuracy? <laughs> that's called trust <laughs> because that we call that a mind journey. And what, what happens is uh, your spirit communicator uh, takes you on a journey is what they do. And um, for some reason with me, you know, all mediums are different, but um, when I work, they, they tend to like to take me into the homes, into their homes, especially. And um, I just go through the house. I mean, I, I love doing it. It's fun. You get, I'm not a nosy person and I, I keep to myself. So it, it's been a learning curve for me to, to allow myself to be nosy as a medium, <laughs> but they take me into the homes and I can open up the cupboards and look inside the cupboards and open up drawers and you find some really interesting things, you know, inside those drawers. But what happens is, is the spirit communicator will take you to the drawer. And if they take you to a drawer, you know, you need to open that drawer up and see what's inside it but they'll, they'll take you to books. They'll take you to lots of different things that have special meanings to their loved one. Um, they like to take, I, for me, they take me to their, their dishes and, and you know, especially the fine china <laughs> where you flip it over and you can look and see the emblem on the bottom that's stamped on the dish in the, the brand or, or the company. So they like to do stuff like that. Um, and now, now, do you get images or is it like more like a feeling or a knowing? It's, it's, it's all of that, actually. Uh -huh. uh, mind journeys tend to be uh, usually with images. But what happens is when, when you receive information from the spirit world, it comes through your solar plexus. And that's where we have our clairsentience. Um, and that's, that clair uh, is feelings. But everything comes through your clairsentience and it moves up to your um, clairvoyance, which is imaging, or your clairaudience, which is clear, uh, hearing. Sometimes I taste things or smell things as well. But um, when, I, when I do a mind journey, it's... Um, usually images but with those images I can feel it and that's where the emotion comes in so I, I, I believe it's important to give the image that practical evidence but then bring in that the essence of the emotion behind it because there's a reason why that spirit communicator wants to show me this 
and it's usually because there's a special memory there so it's just a matter of they take me into their house and that unfolds the story of that person that spirit communicator's life and it brings in the memories that their loved one that's listening can reminisce about and that's where you get that emotion and you can pull on that uh, tug on that emotion because you want you know for me i want to touch the soul of my recipient but how a better way to touch their soul than to bring in that shared that memory and that emotion and then hopefully they'll be able to feel their loved one there with them as well if that makes sense yeah and that, that's a beautiful thing um you know you're you're essentially giving somebody a gift um, yeah that's gonna you know last a lifetime and sometimes it can be life-changing for them right absolutely yes on a soul level more than just you know on on lots of different levels yeah i i've had i've had um clients come to me because their therapists have sent them mm. and it's just because you know the therapist believed that there was unfinished business that needed to be done <laughs> well in my opinion technically i mean it is it is a form of therapy um well it, it can be, but it shouldn't. Well, <laughs> I'm yeah. not a therapist. Right, I'm right. not a therapist. <laughs> and I don't ever want to, you know, be feel that role. But, right. um, you know, it's therapeutic. I, let's put it that way. It, it can be healing. And that's what it is. It's yes. healing. Yes. So, um, yes, it, it, it can be healing because I don't want to know anything about my client. I don't want to know anything about them. So it's, it's not until afterwards that I find these things out <laughs> that, yes, my therapist thought it would be good for me to come, you know. And it's amazing because a lot of times the person that they need to hear from is the ones, are the ones that come. Mm -hmm. And so unbeknownst to me, the healing's taken place. But that's my intent. You know, I start every reading with the intent of let there be healing. What is your your purpose behind all of this? I mean, you know, what, what are you looking to accomplish? I mean, I know there's a lot of things that you're looking to accomplish, but your, your overall, I guess, soul journey or your goal, um, what, what, what are you looking to do? In, in this work, um, I, you know, it's to be of service, really, to be of service to the spirit world and uh, be the voice for the voiceless. But uh, healing is a big thing there because healing needs to take, you know, you know, not just like we were just talking about, healing happens on so many different levels, unbeknownst to me. You know, it, it could possibly be that there's healing that's taken place on both sides of this vow. The person that's here and the person in the spirit world might have to do some healing as well. You know, because I believe in the, uh, soul's progression once we leave here you know life continues and we have to heal you know whatever we need to heal once we get to the spirit world and so um sometimes it's the spirit communicator that needs to come in and say i'm sorry i didn't mean to do this i see the, you know the errors of my way kind of thing and so there's healing taking place on that side of the bow but then the recipient might need to hear that I'm sorry as well. And so that might be the catalyst to bring healing to that person. That makes sense. Yeah, it does. Yeah. So where can we find the new book and where can we find you? Where, where can we check you out at? Um, I, the easiest place is to find me on my website, which is kreynolds.org. Um, and on, on my website, you can find links to my YouTube channel. But my YouTube channel is Medium K Reynolds. Um, Facebook is Medium K Reynolds. The, my Facebook group, if you uh, think that maybe you're a medium or maybe you know you're a medium or a psychic and you want to develop, I have my Facebook group, which is Medium's Corner. Um, you can join that. Um, you know, I'm, I'm all over social media. <laughs> but my, my uh, um, website, 
would be a, a good place to go. Um, my book will be on Amazon. Uh, it'll be on Kindle. It'll be uh, Barnes and Noble as well. Um, hopefully, eventually, I will have audio as well. Um, but that won't be until after the launch for that to take place. Excellent. Yeah. Well, thank you for your time today. And um, thank you for being on the show. Thank you very much for the invitation. I enjoyed it. I now like to end the show with a quote from one of my favorite tweeters, Daily Buddha at Daily Buddha 4. Time is not measured by the years that you live, but by the deeds you do and the joy that you give. And each day as it comes brings a chance to each one to love to the fullest, leaving nothing undone. So what does it matter how long we may live? If as long as we live, we unselfishly give. Thanks for listening, Reality Searchers. Hope you enjoyed the show.